that is freedom of the press. This is the freedom of communication and expression of the press to publish any information that is not listed as legal protected information by the government. That is, the press have the right to print and publish any information regarding any issue in the society in as much as the government did not list that information as protected legally. Welcome back. Now, we are moving ahead to Team 6, which is human rights. And under Team 6, I have the following topics. Build history of UDHR, the seven core freedoms of UDHR, and responsibility of individuals, groups, and governments in UDHR. What do I mean by UDHR? UDHR is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights are the freedoms the citizens of the state are permitted to enjoy by the law. The United Nations in 1948 made a universal declaration of fundamental human rights, which must be applied in all states. But before we go into that, let us move on to the historical background of human rights. Historical background of human rights. In 539 BC, the armies of the Cyrus the Great, the first king of the ancient Persia, conquered the city of Babylon. But it was its next actions that marked a major advancement for man. He freed the slaves, declared that all people had the right to choose their own religion, and established racial equality. This and other decrees were recorded on a baked clay cylinder in the Akkadian language with coin from scripts, known today as the Cyrus cylinder. The ancient record has now been recognized as the world's first charter of human rights. It is translated into all six official languages of the United Nations, and its provisions parallel the first four articles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The seven core freedoms of UDHR. These are treaties that articulate the human rights standard and also obligations of the state. 1. Right to life. Every human being has the inherent right to life. This right shall be protected by law. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his rights. 2. The right to freedom from torture. This law protects one from torture, mental or physical, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. Public authorities must not inflict such treatments on citizens, and they must also protect citizens from this treatment where it comes from someone else. The right to freedom from enslavement or servitude. This right prohibits slavery or servitude and forced labor or compulsory labor. This includes forced and bonded labor, child servitude, and trafficking of human beings. This means that the state must have a legislative and administrative framework capable of enforcing these rights. It must also investigate allegations of slavery, trafficking, or forced labor. The right to freedom of expression. Every citizen has the right to hold his or her own opinions and to express them freely without government interference. This includes the right to express your views allowed or through published articles, books, or leaflets, television or radio broadcasting, works of art, communication on the internet, and so on. 
right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. A person has the right to put his or her own thoughts and beliefs into action. For example, public authorities cannot stop one from practicing his religion publicly or privately without very good reasons as outlined in the restrictions. Freedom from all forms of discrimination. The enjoyment of the rights and freedoms set forth in the European Convention on Human Rights and the Human Rights Act shall be secured without discrimination on any ground such as gender, race, color, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, association with a national minority, property, birth or other status. Responsibilities of individuals and groups in the UDHR. Number one, awareness campaign. Individuals, organizations, institutions, and non-governmental organizations have relevant roles to play in creating public awareness to all human rights and fundamental freedoms through activities such as trainings, mass education, and research to enhance tolerance, understanding, and peaceful coexistence among people of different racial, religious, and cultural backgrounds. Two, peaceful assembly. Individuals and groups in the UDHR have the right to assemble peacefully for the purpose of promoting human rights and fundamental freedoms at the national and international level. Three, advocacy through print and electronic media. Individuals and groups in UDHR have the responsibility to disseminate views, information and opinions regarding human rights through all print and electronic media. Four, access to information. Individuals and groups in a society have the right to seek and know information about all human rights and fundamental freedoms. They should also have the knowledge of how the rights and freedoms are applied in judicial, administrative or legislative system. To complain to the judiciary if rights are violated. Everyone whose rights or freedoms are allegedly violated has the right to complain and have the due legal process of the law implemented. Responsibilities of government in UDHR. One, enactment of law. The government has the responsibility to implement the Charter of the United Nations and other international institutions of the state as regards the Declaration of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. Establishment of agencies. The state shall ensure and support the creation and development of further independent national institutions for the promotion and protection of human rights and freedoms, such as legal aid council, national agencies for the prohibition of traffic in persons, NATIP. Three, publication and widespread of national laws and regulations. The state is responsible for taking legislative, judicial and administrative measures through the publication and widespread availability of laws regarding human rights to promote and enhance the understanding of the citizens of their civil and political rights. Protection against threats, violence, and retaliation. The state shall take responsibility for the protection against